Ladies and gentlemen, how do you like to spend your days off? Perhaps you enjoy catching up with friends or going to see a movie. Maybe retreat into the forest and go for a hike. Or you could be like me and spend five hours trying to complete the Grease Palms mission and ready or not. Because apparently I enjoy inflicting pain on myself and I have too much self-respect to resort to playing Black Ops 6. So let me tell you how I spent my one day off work trying to beat this damn mission that made me consider using a toaster as a bath bomb. Saturday started off great. I had a shower, made a coffee, enjoyed some leftover Chinese food, and then thought, hey, I need to start working on the next video, so I better go record some Ready or Not. And that right there is where I made my first mistake. The mission is Grease Palms, which takes place at the Los Buenos Postal Service. A shootout between detectives and a pair of Los Locos gang members has taken place, and now an armed response is needed. That's me, the second mistake as my parents would put it. You know the drill. Bring order to chaos. Rescue the civilians. Don't shoot the Pfizer agent, no matter how much of a douche canoe he is. Grease Palms is one of the largest and also worst maps to play in the game. Due to the open warehouse, and maze-like design, so much like Lana Rhodes, you're going to be taking shots from every direction. And in conjunction to a few other mods listed in the description below, I'm using Astral's revamped AI, which adjusts the way suspects react and increases the suspect and civilian count to... What the f***? Uh, yeah, hi, can I have every single zip tie you have, please? Oh, and bullets. Lots of bullets. Dear my therapist. Let's get started. Attempt number one started off in a very standard fashion, finding Larry who stopped by the post office to send the package. Following that, I proceed to deliver an airfoil to a suspect nearby who gives up immediately. However, his buddy decides to send me to the morgue instead. Attempt number two saw me resolving a hostage situation in the most rational of manner that's probably going to result in a lawsuit, and attempt number three saw me breach a bathroom and immediately crash the desktop. We're starting off extremely strong. Attempt 4 went slightly better to plan, with me actually managing to subdue not only a suspect, but multiple civilians. And I even managed to beat a suspect to the draw. Haha, <laughs> I always shoot first. Wait. I, uh, I guess this is my life now. Welcome to the next episode of Mythbusters, where we determine can you survive a C2 charge on a metal door while you camp two feet behind it. No, no you can't. Attempt 5 I think? We're starting to go off the rails. Went surprisingly well with no shots fired during the initial clearing, me exchanging shots with a guy who definitely didn't make it out alive, and clearing the vast majority of the warehouse. However, a civilian was taken hostage and popped in the side of the head while I missed multiple shots on the suspect, so I restart the mission. You know, I could be outside mowing the lawns, or at a cafe, or eating glass and be more productive than this. I'll get f***ed. Roughly 25 minutes in, I realized charging the post office and into the warehouse is about as effective as a restraining order on a Rottweiler, so I try to change up the tactics. This time I clear the post office in the small loading dock before heading outside towards a small building on the right hand side. However, much like the birds around my house, we both end up dying to the window. This time, I die. Dead. Dead. I survived. Uh, but the hostage is dead. Have you tried putting a thumb in it? I've lost the thread of this video now, let's just start again. Hi, I'm insane, and this mission made me the bad thing. Grease Palms can frankly be described as a toxic ex-girlfriend. In the sense you hate everything about them and regret getting involved, but there's something to be said about getting fucked at every opportunity. The map can be divided up into four main pieces. The initial post office at the front, mail truck loading area and staff break room to the right hand side, loading bays to the left and rear, and of course the main warehouse in the middle where all your hopes and dreams go to die. Inside the warehouse, you can be shot from literally anywhere, so charging inside isn't the most sound of tactics. So popping your head in briefly like a nose neighbor is usually the safest option since you can whittle down their numbers from a multitude of different angles. While the loading docks at the rear are open spaces with lots of visibility to see suspects from far away, don't forget this is a two-way street and they too can shoot back, and often more accurately. The small building to the right is generally the easiest to clear, granted you don't get shot from a window, and they even have Dr. Pressure. Wait, Dr. Pressure? Seriously? That's a name you chose? Actually to top it all off, there is a bunch of officers inside the warehouse in the upper level too, but between a flashbang and a C2 charge, you'll really have an issue there. So I lock and load to try again. Ooh, I wonder what this does. Finding a new love in the midst of a battle for my own sanity, I bring my newfound bullet hose into battle and begin my Doom Guy cosplay. While the Chris Vector exceeds in CQC, not only does it run out of bullets faster than your dad leaving to get the milk, but its accuracy drops quicker than your mum's knees at the promise of a good time. Ultimately, despite raining hell on the living, I grab my trusty MCX once again and continue my tirade. Not for minutes, no, but for hours. So much so that I get into the headspace that I don't even think this mission is possible as a solo player and maybe I should just call it a day. But I'm as stubborn as they come and I operate out of spite. So you know what? These guys dead. These guys here, dead. This guy also, dead. This guy, dead. Oh wait. So here we go. This is how I managed to complete Grease Palms, the mission that nearly broke me as a player. What the f*** am I doing with my life? First, I start with the post office. And this time, surrender wasn't an option. If they were armed, then they were getting an Uber ride in a hearse. Within a matter of seconds, three bodies had piled up. Surprisingly, none were civilians that you know of. And I swept all the bathrooms just to make sure it's clear. Next came a shot of a lifetime with a hostage coming within millimeters of death, but he's alive, so he better not complain. And the second suspect around the corner never knew what hit him. 
quick sweep to the door on the right and some more long range kills before I move through the right hand side of the warehouse, making sure to check every corner, every crack and take no quarter. Now before I make my move up the catwalk, here's what's going through my head. I definitely know there are more suspects to the front left, however I'm unsure of the exact numbers. There's usually a guy or two behind to the right so you need to be extremely careful when proceeding forward. There is a number of items for suspects to hide behind right in front that need to be cleared slowly, preferably with a flashbang. And Bay 3 leads outside which is still crawling with people starved of a good double tap. So here's how I handle the situation. Moving forward I slow peek to the right. Lo and behold a suspect has his weapon drawn and I bend to the punch. Forward once again checking the immediate left finding only civilians, then a few steps forward to minimize my own body being in the open for too long. A suspect hidden behind a pallet loses the right to live and I tactically hide in the corner to check my ammo count. Once I've made it to bay free, I toss a flashbang over the truck into the open area and proceed to move around the truck to the right. Incoming rounds hit me immediately and I work with the truck as cover to not overexpose myself, then drop the dick who shot me. I quick bandage the heel up and I continue the assault, dropping a suspect over a civilian shoulder who has as much self preservation as a pensioner in a supermarket, and I move back the way I came instead of making myself as vulnerable as a politician browsing history. Sonic the Pfizer agent tries to make an escape before he talks some smack, but I politely suggest he shuts the f up and follows my lead. He obliges. With that done, it's back to the loading bays, doing an extremely wide counterclockwise move, known most commonly as the I'm going to use every piece of cover I can out here maneuver. And once I pass the truck in the middle of the road, I get ambushed by multiple suspects. One guy goes down just as quick as it starts, and I utilize all the cover I can until I can take a shot on the suspect who hides about as well as a four-year-old playing hide and seek. Mag change, ambush, flashbang, and a flurry to the right where another suspect yet again gets a drop on me, but my trigger finger has yet to feel any fatigue and he won't be feeling anything any longer. Now a slightly tricky part comes into play with this wire fence not being the easiest to see through, but I still spot this guy before he has a chance to react. Remember. No Unsure if I'm alone, I toss another flashbang and run into another chap who's come down with the terrible curse of main character syndrome. Unfortunately for him, he's what we call a Sean Bean. Now this is where things get a little spicy. This is the last section of the loading base to clear before I have to move inside and my brush with death is a little too close for comfort. Lucky for me, he didn't land one more shot and I now rule the roost. With that said, let's go back inside and try not to die. Heading into the small loading dock and finding only civilians, I take the initiative to move into the warehouse and up the stairs into the upper office. The Opti wand has nothing in view, however it does doesn't mean that there isn't anyone inside, so I ready the flashbang and bounce it off the shelf to the left. Once it detonates I flick from left to right, back to the left and headshot a flashbang suspect to reassure he's not going to be a problem. Continuing in a counterclockwise fashion to clear the remainder of the room, I encounter a suspect holding a civilian hostage and dispatch him without any further incident, clear the manager's office and head to the catwalk. With the power of the Opti One I find another door camper but this time I'm lacking the C2 charge that I had before, so I play it safe by kicking the door and staying out of sight, letting him unload all over the place and then blowing his back out. What? After that it's slowly making my way down the stairs, shooting this guy who failed basic cover 101 and clearing the Pfizer office calling in the evidence located in the bin. With essentially 90% of the map cleared, it's time to begin the final march. All that remains is a small building on the eastern side of the map and as demonstrated before, is not to be underestimated. The angles are tight, the corners are deliberate, anything to lessen my chances of getting no scope by a guy hiding behind a dumpster. Finally I reach the door and kick it open. A few moments later. Like seriously? Many months later. Thank you for playing sir. Oh that was the last suspect. I mean... After 6 hours of repeated attempts, I finally managed to clear grease palms by myself and my blood pressure can finally start to settle. A momentous occasion and quite frankly all I'd like to say is that this mission can suck my Thanks for watching whatever the hell this was, now if you'll excuse me, I need to go buy a toaster. See you in the next one.